Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Madam uh, Minister Agne, Honorable Ministers, Ambassadors, Distinguished Delegates, Excellences, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's an honor for me to be with you today. This is my first visit since I took office as Director General of FAO only 20 days ago. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to see many familiar faces here in Germany, a country with a firm commitment to a strong and more effective FAO, and a country that is promoting sustainable development, a shared objective among those in this room. So thank you all for this invitation. During my mandate, I will focus FAO work on three priorities. First, we will step up in effort to end hunger. I'm convinced that we can achieve this goal if we work together with true political commitment and transform our view into concrete actions. This is an effort that must involve all actors of society at all levels. Neither FAO nor any other agents or government alone can eradicate hunger. This is a deal for a society. FAO is ready to increase the support to low-income, food deficit country, especially those facing protected crisis, countries that, face, that place food security at the top of their national agenda, FAO will be immediately assisting them to prepare strategies and mobilize, mobilize resources to implement them. This needs to be a bottom-up approach, using the knowledge and the experience available at local level and building up from there. Hunger combat does not need to reinvent the wheel. Africa will remain FAO's priority. Later this month, I will attend the African Union Summit in Addis Ababa, and I also visiting Kenya and Somalia. Secondly, my priority will be support the shift on technologies, sustainable patterns of production and consumption. This is a central point in the conversation that will be uh, held in here today. So I'll come back to this point later. Third priority is to move FAO to be working for a greater fairness in the food management. The international community needs to put in place an effective global governance system for food security and agree upon rules to how we want to manage our shared reserves, land, water, genetic research, etc. This is a necessary complement to the efforts we need to make at regional level and local levels. Until my mandate ends in June 2015, this will be the priorities you see FAO focusing its work. Three and a half years is a short period, so we have no time to lose. In three and a half years, I want us to see an organization that has been able to improve its delivery, reinvent itself it's necessary. This is a challenge time that we must confront together. I trust our capacity to do so. For instance, the, the upcoming Rio Plus 20 conference provides us with a unique opportunity to advance the agendas of food security and sustainability together, especially with the added urgency of the impact of climate change. I believe that the goal of ending hunger is not incompatible with promoting sustainable agriculture. On the contrary, we need to advance together in these areas if we are to succeed in any one of them. No development will be sustainable if we leave hungry people behind. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to address four specific points. First, 
I would like to begin discussing the role of women. Women is key in many aspects on food security. In most cases, they are responsible for assuring that all family members have a health diet. This is no small task, especially when food prices rise. In this case, protein-rich products, fresh fruits and vegetables are usually the first to go and are replaced by cheaper but less nourishing products. It's not a contradiction, so, that overweight and obesity tend to increase during times of crisis. Additionally, over the years, we have lost our grandmother's expertise on how to prepare the food we eat. We have become used to buy processed food instead of producing it themselves. We need to urgently put in place food and nutrition education programs to help families eat better. Women can also play an important role in increasing food production, as shown in the last edition of FAO State of Food and Agriculture 2010, available in our website. Second point, I want to discuss how we can use and conserve our natural research better. FAO and the Committee on World Food Security, CFS, and I just saw his president, Mr. Ambassador Yaya, uh, that is with us here. Welcome, Ambassador. Our leading CFS and FAO are leading an important consultation to finalize the voluntary guideline on responsible governance of land, of tenure of land, fisheries, and forest next March. This is a particular a participatory effort in which governments, civil society, organizations, and the private sector discuss the principles that we want to put in place to guarantee that our natural resources promote food security and are used in a responsible way. These guidelines provide a framework that states can use when developing their own strategy, policies, legislation, and programs on the governance of natural resources. Let me point out also that sex water will become increasingly important. And it is also an issue that needs to be looked at, look at carefully and at international level. Through the word, lakes and rivers either set limits between countries or flown from one to another. The management of transboundary waters has become more and more conflictive in recent years. FAO has the necessary expertise to assist countries in better management of water research and improving efficiency in agriculture water uses. Third point, I would like to discuss in greater detail sustainable food production and consumption. We can feed the seven people living in our planet today with the existence technology and we will be able to feed the 9 billion people who live on it in 2050. The question is, how do we want to do this? I think that it's only one answer. We need to shift from our current agriculture paradigm, which is based on the intensive use of natural research and chemical inputs, to one that allows us to increase yields while using less external resource, and with which is also less harmful to the environment and reduce green gas emission. If we call this green green revolution, double green revolution, or whatever, what I know is that it is needed urgently. Support to smallholders and rural development is essential also to achieving food security and enhancing environmental performance. But large-scale systems can 
and must become more sustainable as well. This includes increasing investments in innovation and agricultural research and development, and especially targeting smallholders. About 8% of the increase in food that is needed to eliminate hunger and feed a growing world population will, will have to come from increases in, in yields and crop intensity from developing countries. This requires the use of new technologies and better adapted them to the needs of smallholders and to the local conditions they have. However, we cannot limit the sustainability to food production. We must also look at our consumption patterns. We need to find ways to eat healthier food, waste less, and reduce losses in transportation and storage without having increasing the production so much. Hopefully, one third of the food actually produced in the world every year is lost. Approximately 1.3 billion tons get lost or wasted. One figure can help us to understand what means this amount. Every year, consumers in rich country almost as much food waste 222 million tons, what means the entire net food production of the sub-Sahara region in Africa. Food loss also occur in poor storage facilities and during long distance transportation, which is becoming more expensive as oil and energy prices rise. Supporting local small-scale production to complement international food trade is an important way forward. Globally, there are about 500 million smallholder farmers, less than two hectares in the developing world, and they are home to some two billion people. At the same time, around 7% of them are in extreme poverty and live in rural areas. People are hungry today, not because there is not enough food available, but because they do not have enough money to buy the food. We cannot ask them to wait for structural change to happen. We need to provide immediate assistance while we work on those changes. The way to do is, this is by adding a long-term development dimension to our emergency intervention, as FAO and others are starting to do with very positive results, for example, in Somalia. Cash for work and cash transfer programs can be a driving force for local growth by stimulating local markets, especially when they are linked with supporting small-scale production. When this happens, farmers have market incentives to produce. The population has money to buy locally, and therefore to buy food that's fresher, healthier, and I respect cultural heritage. This produces a wide spillover effect on the economy as a whole. In rural areas where there is hunger, we usually find economically stagnant communities. This type of support with cash transfer program allow those communities to bloom. In many cases, we cannot go even further by tying local production to institutional demands, like school meals program, allowing small-scale producers to provide part of the food children need, as become law in Brazil nowadays. The cycle of planting, harvesting, and consuming is what spins the economic wheels of millions of small communities. Supporting this process 
through credit, technical assistance, guarantee markets for small scale producers, and better infrastructures. Combine it with social protection, will not only reduce hunger, but also spur broad based economic and social development. Ladies and gentlemen, FAO is prepared to provide its contribution. It's ready to scale up its support by drawing on the best the organization has to give to work with governments and other partners that place any hunger as a top priority on their agenda. To do so, FAO will promote the integration of service and knowledge and strengths in its presence in the fields, improving our own decentralization. The ultimate value for FAO and its works comes from its impact on the lives and livelihoods of people in its member countries. For this, FAO's normative and standard setting work must be translated into country level impact. Its global knowledge products must lead to tangible change in policy and practice, and its programs in the field must produce miserable and valuable results. Excellences, Minister of Agriculture, FAO is ready to work with you to help to reach the goal of food security for your, their populations. I look forward to see you in Rio Plus 20 conference. This will be a unique opportunity to show that agriculture is not part only the problem of the environment, but it could be also part of the solution for a, a better world. Thank you very much.